How's it going guys? We're going to go over how to write the formula for a compound that you only have the name of. So we're going to start off here with, let's see, magnesium oxide. If you watched the previous video, you probably remember the IDE is added whenever it's just two elements and it's a cation and an anion. So we're going to start off with Mg, which let's break it down a little bit. We know that the Mg is a two plus charge because we can look at the periodic table and see that it's in the second column. Oxygen being the anion here is a two minus because it's in the second row, not including the noble gases. So it's gonna be two minus. So that means there shouldn't be any subscripts here. It should just be MgO. Let's see, number two we'll say lithium nitride. Okay, so again, we know now in this case it's just going to be two different elements, but let's check the charges for if there's any subscripts. So lithium is here, it's going to be a one plus. And nitrogen is in the third column from the end here, so that's going to be a 3 minus. In order for this to get to a neutral charge, we're going to have to have three lithiums to one nitrogen. So that's going to be the formula there. Next we're going to have a little bit of a trickier one. carbon tetrachloride. If you've broken down that word there, you can tell there's going to be a, a chlorine in there. But uh, tetra, so what, what does that mean and why is that there? So let's check out for carbon, it's going to be right here, a four plus. And then tetrachloride is going to be, let's see, a Cl. We can break that down in order to, Cl is in the last column here. Under fluorine, it's gonna be also a minus one charge. And based on this, we can tell there has to be four chlorines in order to equal a four minus charge to neutralize this four plus charge. So we're gonna have CCl4. So tetrachloride just refers to the number of chlorides. But you'll notice it doesn't. It's not the case with this. Like this isn't um, trilithium nitride. Uh, or if there were like two nitride or nitrogens here, it wouldn't be lithium nit uh, dinitride because there's a cation and anion. In this case, because carbon is on this side of the periodic table, and also chloride is on that side, it's almost as though it's like two anions. Which carbon is kind of a it fills a special place. It can be kind of in a lot of unique situations there, but the, the point of it is if you have two things that are on that side of the periodic table, like so say you had, uh, I don't know, like OCL or something, uh, make sure you watch out for the number and then include that in the title and the name. So let's see, we'll do aluminum carbonate. Aluminum carbonate, that's going to be the same way we started all these other ones. I'm going to start off with the first element, Al. Find the charge. Now for aluminum, it can be, I believe it's one of those that can vary sometimes, if I'm not mistaken, but it's going to be a 3 plus charge. And then carbonate. It's going to be something with a C, but it's not just, it's not like carbide or something like that. Um, it's not just carbon. So carbonate, we're going to consult our chart if we have one. If not, we'll have memorized it. Let's see here. Carbonate. CO3 2 minus. Now we can use those charges to try to see. A lot of people will say you can just cross the charges, but in, just in the off chance that that doesn't work some in, in some way, I, I think it's easier just to think of through it mathematically. So we know it's going to start with 
the uh, cation and in order to we're going to need three of these and two of these in order because uh, three and two it's the it's common factor there so we're going to have a two here to make a total of plus six and then CO3 which is a, a two minus charge we're going to need to have three of those but you wouldn't just put the three next to this because that would then suggest this whole compound because it is all one compound it is three of them so you're going to do like that and then this if you're trying to do the reverse you will just uh, factor that through and tell that there are going to be three carbons there and then three times three is nine so it's going to be nine oxygen there so now uh, here's one from the previous problem just another one to watch out for it's got that two in there uh, actually it's probably more helpful than anything else because if if it didn't have that indication we wouldn't necessarily be positive of which charge it is if we didn't know what this charge was but now we know it's a, a two plus so that means we must know that the charge for iodate is a two minus unless it has multiple um, exponents there so iodate we're gonna have start off with nickel and then we know iodate is is its own compound um, it's gonna be IO let's see here iodate is IO I think it's 3 minus Yep, no, no, it's, yeah, it's IO3, oops. And then we're going to need two of them because each one is a minus one. So if you do out the math, uh, two times negative one is negative two. Um, and then we have a plus two here, so it equals out. So other than these, um, the only things you really have to watch out for, specific compounds that you might be using in lab that your professor perhaps would expect you to know, um, like one of them is methane, CH4. If they just give you that, you might not know off the top of your head, and methane might not be in your chart if it's not like bonding to something. Um, like water is another easy one, but everyone should be able to get that. Um, ammonia is one I specifically had to know. What's that? NH3. Um, and then other than that, uh, watch out for diatomics. So like for instance, if if they ask you to write the formula for hydrogen gas, it's not just H, it's H2 because it's a diatomic, which means that uh, for the diatomics, um, they are, in, in natural situations, they're, they bond together with two of them. So it's not just a single hydrogen existing in the atmosphere or something, it's going to be H2. So a way to remember your diatomics is this mnemonic, have no fear of ice cold beer and then just remember this C is a CL and this B is a BR and then you're good to go each of these is H it's H2 N2 F2 uh, O2 I2 CL2 BR2 these are the, the ones that you gotta watch out for if they ask for what the formula for the gas is again for like hydrogen gas or like if they ask you um, like I don't know nitrogen gas the formula is going to be n2 not just n okay cool i hope this helps someone